Today I'm talking about how to shoot real estate photography. Before we get started, on a scale from one to five, five being the most difficult, how difficult do you think real estate photography is if you haven't shot real estate photography? And another question, have you ever shot real estate photography? If so, on a scale from one to five, five being the most difficult, how difficult was it? Let me know down in the comments below. In this video, what we'll be going over is my workflow that I use to shoot real estate photography. There are two sides to real estate photography. That is the business side, which is very important. And that includes the marketing, finding clients, scheduling, etc. The business side. Then there's the production side, the creative side, which includes the production and post-production, which is taking the photos, editing the photos, and getting them ready to be sent out. And then it turns into the business side. But what we'll be doing is the production side, AKA shooting side of real estate photography, so here are the main elements of the workflow I use to create real estate photography. This workflow makes up what I call the gold standard, the basic photo shoot, walking through and prepping the property, setting up the camera, completing the shot list and shutting down the property. All these steps resonate across all the other types of shoots I do. It's just different when it comes to the size of the property, how many shots, and if there's a floor plan, etc. Now, this is the typical workflow I use for about 60% of the clients that I work with. For the other 40, there are clients who are more involved in the shoot, which means they stage the property or they are there during the shoot to prep the property, or they want more specific shots, such as architectural shots or shots that are specific for interior design, which I could talk about more in another video. If you would like to learn more about that, let me know down in the comments below. Now let's get into the shot list. I call this a gold standard shot list, but it is basically the standard shot list. The standard shot list consists of 16 photos, which should cover most homes, which is four exterior shots and 12 interior shots. The exterior shots consist of two photos of the front of the property and two photos of the back of the property. For the front of the property, you want to capture a straight on shot and a shot at an angle. When shooting the front, it is easy to capture the property from the side where the garage is located, but no one wants to see a massive garage door, so try and shoot from the other side, the side where the garage is not located. Sometimes there are trees or hedges in front of the property on the other side where the garage is not, so you may have to settle for shooting from the garage. This all goes out the window when there is a six foot fence in front of the property. In that case, do what you can. Play around with the angles and composition to create a shot that makes the property look more flattering. There are certain angles, focal lengths, and distances you can shoot from to make the property look more appealing. If you wanna see more on that, let me know down in the comments below. For the back of the property, you want to do the same thing, one straight on and one at an angle. The difference with the back is if they have a patio or a deck, you wanna choose the side that is most flattering when it comes to shooting the deck. Typically when shooting patios, you wanna shoot where the stairs are located, which I find to be more inviting. Now let's move into the interior. For the interior, you have 12 shots in total for the gold standard shot list. To complete the shot list, you wanna capture two shots at a living room, two shots at a family room, two shots at a dining room, two shots at a kitchen, kitchen, one shot of each bedroom, one shot of the basement, and at least one bathroom. Most homes have one to three bedrooms, and there may be a half bath in there somewhere, but always shoot the bathroom that looks the best, which is typically the master ensuite or the main bathroom, but capture all of them in case the client wants more than one. With this standard shot list, you should have enough photos to capture most basic homes. I don't want to complicate this shoot, but some homes may not have a dining room, a family room, so you may be able to get more shots of other rooms if needed. This is where you are allowed to be creative. It is okay to exclude the smaller bedrooms. You want to capture the biggest bedrooms and the nicest bathrooms if you have more shots than rooms. What I'm trying to say is shoot the best rooms because there are times where you find that you have more rooms than you have shots. In general, you want to have an idea of the gold standard shot list before entering the property. Most agents will look at you for direction on what type of shots are best for the home, where to start, and if everything looks picture ready. Having an idea of what you are going to be shooting is the best place to start before entering the property. It is the best place to start because although all homes may have a living room, a kitchen, a bedroom, and a bathroom, when you walk into a home, all of that goes out of the window based on what is actually in the home. And you will need to tweak your shot list based on the layout of the property which rooms you're actually allowed to shoot and shooting around certain things that agents or the homeowners does not want to come out in the photos. But that's another topic we can cover in another video. If you want to see more or talk more about that, let me know down in the comments below and I could definitely make a video around that for you. 
have your shot list ready to go. And this is where you will know what shots you will need based on the layout of the property. For this video, we will stick to the gold standard shot list. To get started, you wanna walk through the property and prep the home. Here's the prep list, but first, this list is based on you working the property alone and the agent, homeowner slash seller and tenants have already vacated the home or giving you a day to shoot the property. If you're working with the agent on site, then the agent should already have the property prepped. Keyword, should. Most of the time you will find yourself walking through and prepping the property with the agent because remember the agent will look for you for direction on how the property should look and if it's picture ready i can go further into how to navigate the home when the others are there if you're interested in seeing a video on that let me know down in the comments below this is a two-step list with prepping the property step one turn on all the lights and open all the curtains and blinds when opening the curtains and blinds make sure you check whether opening the blinds completely is the best way to shoot or if just opening the slats. Sometimes a home may look better with the slats open rather than seeing the entire world outside of the window. Step two, stuff all the things you do not want in the shot in the closets if possible and close all the toilets. I think of all of this as one step. Turn on all the lights, clear the space, open the blinds, close all the toilets. And as you power walk through the property, make sure to do all of those things before setting up the camera to shoot. There may be some shoots where you have a limited amount of time on the property. If this is in a high profile shoot where they're requiring you to set up flashes and all the beautiful gear, a typical shot should take you about 10 to 30 minutes depending on the state and size of the property. Okay, you have your shot list, you have the property prepped, and now you want to prep the camera. For this shoot, we will be exposure bracketing, basically creating HDR photos. It is the only way I shoot. I do not edit my own photos. I send them out to be edited by someone that can do a way better job than me. This also means you do not need a flash. All you need is a camera, a tripod, and a polarizing filter in addition to natural light. Well, I take that back. There have been a handful of shoots where I needed to take out a flash because the property either had no windows or it was dark outside or the property had no internal ceiling lights and there were no lamps. So be sure to keep a flash with you at all times in those cases where you'd have to take it out. And this is all the gear you need. The next step is to make sure your camera settings are correct by putting the camera in exposure bracketing mode. Today I'm using the Sony a7 IV and all you need to do is press the bracketing and timer button on the left of the back control dial. Scroll down till you get to BRKC and then scroll until you reach your desired bracketing settings. I shoot five exposures with a 0.5 variation between each shot. So this is what I'm using today. What that means is that it will take five photos at different exposure levels. Here's an example of what that looks like. Now you have your camera set up and the modes dialed in. Next, you wanna complete the shot list. When composing a shot, you wanna make sure you get as much room as possible, capture at least three walls. And if there is furniture, make sure you avoid shooting the back and sides of the furniture. Sometimes the back and the sides of the furniture are unavoidable, but you wanna make sure you compose the shot in a way that draws the attention away from the sides and back of the furniture when captured. If there's no furniture, then all you have to do is capture the room. You wanna find a main focal point of the room, like a fireplace and compose the shot to complement that while also complementing the size of the room. I know it's definitely a juggling act. Then go around the entire property and repeat. Sometimes there are no focal points, but there may be a window. Make sure you shoot from the corner that will flatter the size of the room and capture the window. If the window isn't that flattering, then shoot the direction across from the closet. Try to make the interior look as flattering as possible and as big as possible. Most people only care about the interior and the more flattering you can make it look, the more compliments the agent will get on the property and the more viewings and potential offers, which is a win-win for you and the agent. Just do the best you can with the outlook to improve. Okay, you completed the interiors. Now it's time to capture the exterior. I captured the exteriors last because you want to make sure the blinds are open when taking the shot. Don't want to make the home feel closed off and unwelcoming. But if the agent has arrived before you and prepped the property, then you can shoot the exterior first and move inside. I'll also mention there are some agents who prefer to do the outside first, even if the home is closed off. You can recommend opening up the home first, but in the end, make sure you consider what the agent wants to do as well. But also remember, you might be using these photos as marketing for future work. Make sure you capture the best photos you can. You've completed the shot list. Now it's time to shut down the property by turning off all the lights, closing all the blinds, taking out all the things you stuffed into the closet and putting them back to where they belong. 
and locking up. Make sure you take a photo of returning the keys into the lockbox and send it to the agent. This is if you are out shooting alone. If you would like to see more videos about real estate photography and how to start end and complete shoots or do specific things on a shoot, let me know in the comments below. If you got any value out of this video, consider hitting like and subscribe and staying awesome. Stay awesome.